नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स इन दिस डिस्कोर्स द स्पीकर इज गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस नदर मोस्ट कॉम्प्लेक्स एंड फॉरबिडिंग वर्च्यू that is brahmacharya the most confused the most misunderstood and misinterpreted virtue what is brahmacharya it's also a very important virtue that needs to be practiced but its connotation has to be properly understood in a right way unfortunately all religions uh, have given the negative meaning of this brahmacharya they have not uh, properly given the meaning of what this brahmacharya is and therefore the confusion arises and therefore the many of us are frightened of this word brahmacharya the word brahmacharya is a combination of two sanskrit words brahman and charya brahman is the state of pure consciousness and that is the word that is given for the ultimate reality in the upanishads but one of the aspects of this ultimate reality is pure consciousness chit and therefore brahman is identified with pure consciousness charya means behavior conduct behavior or conduct that leads to the brahman that is brahmacharya it implies that um, it implies a discipline that can be adopted and pursued vigorously to attain that state of brahman that is pure consciousness that is the meaning of brahmacharya its english translation is celibacy but celibacy cannot truly represent brahmacharya in the western tradition celibacy is given in the sense of uh, abstaining totally from sexual indulgences and that kind of meaning cannot be applied to the word brahmacharya
in our tradition of this land our ancient sages have identified this brahmacharya as one of the ashram dharmas during this phase of uh, human life the student undergoes vigorous discipline under the guidance of a master guru and during this training the student is forbidden from uh, indulging in any act that could spoil the ways of learning therefore uh, brahmacharya phase in the brahmacharya phase the student is not allowed to indulge any kind of negative actions his main idea or his main object or goal is to gain the knowledge of brahman learn everything not only the shastras not only the vedic dharma but the philosophy of work how one can live in this world by doing work not from abstaining from the work so all this is taught in this ashrama dharma in those days but now that idea is completely lost that philosophy of brahmacharya is completely submerged in the modern complexities of life let's understand the, the actual connotations of this word most complex word most puzzling word brahmacharya does not mean abstaining totally from acts and actions one important uh, act that is attributed to this brahmacharya is abstaining from the sex and sexual acts or indulging in carnal pleasures sensual pleasures we are all uh, human beings and we have emotions and feelings when we come into contact with the objects and things in the world they create sensation in us 
and there is nothing wrong in undergoing the, the sensation. It's not a sin or a crime to experience that sensation. The speaker is saying that we cannot abstain from the sensation because to feel, to respond, to react is the fundamental nature of this life, human life. So all objects and things in the world create sensation. But what happens? This sensation creates a desire, a deep desire. When that desire persists long and you want to materialize that desire somehow or the other, by some means or the other. Therefore you pursue this desire. You invest your time and energy to get those desires converted into concrete realities. So, this strong pursuit to realize those desires will in turn create samskaras, subliminal impressions, and these samskaras, subliminal impressions, create modifications on the chitta, that is, mind. So therefore, brahmacharya means not abstaining from sensation, but abstaining from indulging in excess of desires and in mad pursuit of such desires, which in turn create those samskaras, which of course will create havoc on our mind. This is the one meaning that uh, we need to understand about this most puzzling word, brahmacharya. And the speaker is clarifying it in a clear terms. And there shouldn't be any confusion about it. It's not uh, abstaining from a sexual act. This is most dangerous way of uh, interpreting this word brahmacharya. We need to distinguish from sex and sexuality. Sex is an act of creation. Where there is sex, there is creation. Where there is creation, there is sex. Without sex there is no creation. If we, human beings, abstain from the act of sex, then the whole human race will come to an end. And that is meaningless, totally absurd. But sexuality, that is, constant indulgence in such sensual thoughts about sex without actually having that natural act of sex. This is dangerous. 
This is what the speaker is trying to point out. When he says abstaining from, abstaining from not, not from the act of sex, which is a beautiful act on which the whole creation stands, but abstaining from sexuality, which means constantly entertaining such thoughts and indulging in such carnal thoughts, sensual thoughts. This is the second meaning of Brahmacharya. The third meaning of Brahmacharya is observing moderation in our acts and actions. Moderation is a beautiful virtue. This moderation is opposed to the extreme indulgence, excess indulgence. Observing moderation in eating, sleeping, exercise, in work, and so on. In every act, observing moderation in every act is what is known as brahmacharya. Because in observing moderation we conserve energy. We, can, we do not waste energy. And that Conserved energy can be utilized for the pursuit of a higher. But in the indulgences, we waste energy. Energy is unnecessarily dissipated. It is unnecessarily wasted. So we have very little time left. For the pursuit of the higher. Therefore, constantly observing moderation in our life, in our day to day living, in our actions, in our habitual actions, in our activities will in turn build up our personality. And this observing moderation is what is known as Brahmacharya. And this moderation is a virtue. This moderation will help you build you have a strong personality and character. And this moderation is what is known as yoga. Because in moderation you strike balance. In fact, moderation means striking balance. Your life should be perfectly balanced in all your activities and actions. So moderation means achieving balance in our living. When we achieve that balance, you are in the state of yoga and that is what is known as brahmacharya. Not abstaining from the act of sex. But abstaining from the 
from indulging in sexuality, constantly entertaining thoughts about sex, thoughts about sensual pleasures, these have to be abstained because they create more samskaras in the subconscious mind and they in turn create modifications, vrittis. Another meaning of this word brahmacharya is following the virtues such as simplicity, honesty, contentment, non-possessiveness, and so on, satya, ahimsa, all these strengthen your character and all those, all these virtues go in making you as a brahmachari. When you follow these virtues, you are a brahmachari. Not merely abstaining from marrying. Such a person is not called brahmacharya. He is not a brahmachari. The true brahmachari is one who treads all these virtues true to that spirit conserve energy by not indulging in excesses and extremities and use that energy for uh, pursuing the higher. That is Brahmacharya. I hope the listeners have understood the actual uh, connotations of this most complex and puzzling word, Brahmacharya. So we have examined in this course this most complex word its various dimensions its multiple implications. I hope the listeners are, have, have gained a sense of clarity about this word brahmacharya. So brahmacharya means observing moderation in every act and action. And what happens in such moderation? We conserve energy without unnecessarily wasting it and we can use that energy for a right cause, for a right purpose, for the pursuit of the higher. So Brahmacharya is abstaining from indulging in excesses, in extremities that would cause terrible damage not only to our body but to our nervous system and the mind. Namaskar.